Now, NASA and Elon Musk own SpaceX are preparing for the return of the Crew 9 mission from the International Space Station, uh, targeting an earlier than expected touchdown on March 18th. Now, this will allow the astronauts Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore to end their nine month long space stay after being stranded due to technical difficulties on the Boeing Starliner. The mission managers decided to aim for an earlier uh, than um, planned return after evaluating weather condition of Florida's coast on the 16th of March with favorable conditions expected on 18th. Now, the revised date allows the astronauts to complete their handover duties aboard the ISS while also offering a bit of flexibility in case the weather conditions worsen later on in the week. Moreover, NASA is broadcasting the crew's journey back to Earth live uh, starting 8.15 a.m. IST on the 17th of March. We're being joined by Group Captain V.N. Cha, former Joint Director of DRDO. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for speaking to NewsX. Of course, we're showcasing those visuals right now of, of when uh, Williams and Wilmore met the Crew 10 when they welcomed their replacements on board uh, the ISS. That was, of course, a very a heartwarming moment. It's been uh, nine months and the original mission that was planned was for a mere eight days. And now, of course, um, while anticipating their return, there are a lot of concerns as far as their health is concerned as well. Uh, so could you walk our viewers through uh, perhaps some of the potential challenges they could face after they'd return? Very good morning, Pia. Uh, thank you very much for taking up the subject of uh, space science. And uh, I'm so proud uh, uh, NewsX has been, you know, uh, giving plenty of time for this particular uh, science. Well, uh, now it is sure uh, that uh, Sunita William along with Buck Wilmore and uh, the two crew members of uh, uh, Crew 9, that was uh, Nick Haig and uh, Gurvindra, they will be coming back. Four of them will be coming back. Uh, scheduled to depart uh, uh, tomorrow, as you mentioned. Uh, they have already checked their uh, uh, crew nine vehicle. Uh, they call it uh, a crew dragon. Uh, all the serviceability have been done. All uh, um, uh, life support systems checked up. Uh, refilling done. Uh, boosters are in place with sufficient fuel. So all those things have been done. Now, as you are, you have mentioned that uh, handing over, taking over, or the debrief. Uh, that must be going on because uh, Sunita William and Book Wilmore, even though they were not part of the original crew for the ISS conducting various uh, exercises and experiments, they have been doing so in the last nine months. And uh, uh, all those uh, debrief will be given to the new set of the crew who have gone uh, the other day. Uh, so having completed that, then now they will get into the, the procedure of the de-docking. Uh, this is a process wherein uh, they decide what time they have to touch down here. You know, the space science is very interesting. Here, everything we plan backward. If the uh, crew nine has to make us splash down into uh, some Gulf uh, of either Mexico or uh, of the Florida coast, they work out backward. Where will be the shoot deployment? Where will be the reinterior atmosphere? At what rail? Uh, how much of the uh, deceleration will happen of the crew when it descends down. So all those things are uh, worked backward. And finally, all these parameters are fed into the computer of the crew nine, which will be bringing them back. And that takes a decision with a crew in loop, what we call it here. Should anything go wrong with the computerized system, the crew who are trained into that uh, system, they take over and then they uh, guide themselves, maneuver themselves back to the earth. So that is how everything will be going on. Coming back to the health of the crew, look, there is nothing unusual. Space is environment is very, very challenging. It is a hostile environment. But the environment within the ISS is something like Earth. They work in uh, you know, uh, sleeves up uh, in the normal clothing they work. The, uh, the atmosphere is uh, at what one atmospheric pressure. Oxygen percentage is something like what we have here on the Earth. So are the carbon dioxide with some amount of uh, leverages here and there. So they have been working in the near near earth condition all through. Yes, health is a, a problem. Uh, living is a problem. Uh, 
uh, when they work there, there is no gravity in the sense that uh, uh, the the centrifugal force mm. of the velocity is equal to the centripetal force of the Earth's pulling. So these two neutralize together. That is how that vehicle is in the orbit. And in the orbit, there is no gravity field. So that is what we call it zero gravity or microgravity environment they have been living on. Two important things happens there is, one is that the load onto our spine, muscles, uh, uh, disappear. So there is a tendency for the muscles to waste, especially the anti-gravity muscles that, that makes us uh, upright. Those muscles have got tendency to weight. And since loading onto the bone is no longer there because we don't have any weight, so bone also has a tendency to demineralize. So to counter these things, there are the exercise uh, uh, worked out there. There are treadmills, there are uh, you know, various uh, uh, equipment with which you do the exercise. Every crew does about one and a half to two hours of the daily exercise. Mandatory it is for everyone. So that is one thing. Second is you know, the routine changes. Now here on Earth, we are used to day and night, 12 hours and 12 mm. hours there up in the sky the day is for 45 minutes and the night is for another 45 minutes in every 90 minutes one and a half hour the iss goes around the earth in one uh, complete circle so in that 90 minutes we have got half period of the day and half period of the night so it is difficult to say that 24 four hours of our circadian rhythm how good it works people have to get used to it that is another thing sleeping becomes a problem because you can't sleep in that uh, 45 minutes of the night condition. So there is a section uh, of, of the uh, uh, rest in that uh, ISS, wherein lights are dimmed to near night conditions. There is least of the disturbance, least of the vibration, noise, and other things. That is where people strap themselves. So those are the things. Uh, of course, the, the you know life support system is so uh, robust that uh, since the early uh, 90s, it has been working up there. Uh, they are the replacement requires of the oxygen, uh, replacement of the water for drinking. Food has to go from here. Clothes, you can't wash the clothes there. There are a couple of toilets there, of course, uh, uh, which takes care of day-to-day uh, -day needs. But then there is a, uh, there, there's a constrained life uh, way. Uh, one has to get used to all those things. So welcome, Sunita and uh, book must be very elated to see the crew that now they, it's there to come back because crew nine has been there all through since one. And there is one more emergency uh, module. Should anyone face any life threatening event, mm -hmm. uh, there is a provision of that emergency module to uh, decouple from the ISS and come back to the earth. But that is uh, a medical uh, uh, crew uh, module, uh, which has got a very strict instructions for who can go into that, who will come into that. Mm -hmm. So all these things are there. There is no danger to anyone. Uh, even Sunita William and uh, Book, they would have accepted. They have earlier lived there at the ISS for a very long time. Mm -hmm. People have lived up to about six. So uh, no major concern. People have been used to it. Uh, it's only getting used to it. Psychologically, you have to accept that, yes, as and when uh, my replacement comes or the vehicle comes for me to take back to the earth, we will be coming there. So they are all right now, you know, uh, boost up in their uh, mindset that, yes, tomorrow they will be leaving that place. Uh, leaving departure is slightly uh, different in a way. I told you that all the parameters would have been fed into the computer of the crew nine. Hmm. Uh, after it decouples, then it first gets away from the about 200 meters plus at a very slow rate uh, in uh, uh, absolutely taking the precaution that it doesn't uh, uh, collide with any part of the ISS. Yes. It's out 200 meters, then the deceleration process starts. The moment, right now it is uh, moving with the velocity of about 7.7 .7 or 7.8 kilometer per second, about 28,000 kilometers per hour. So that's a hell of a velocity. And the moment it starts coming down, with the gravity, it will be pulled. So mm. velocity are likely to even increase further. So it has to be de-boosted, decelerated. So deceleration process will start. Moment deceleration happens, velocity decreases, it will be pulled up by the Earth's gravity. Mm. And then it comes, starts coming down 
and finally it will make a, a re-entry process. During the re-entry, at that phase, uh, there is a very high temperature around the crew uh, module uh, in which they will be coming. It goes to about 1800 degrees Celsius to about 2400 degrees Celsius, depending on the, uh, the velocity at that time. So, is the type of temperature uh, what it has to go through. And finally, having passed through that compartment of the uh, atmosphere, then it comes down, cools down at the higher uh, altitude, and then thereafter the uh, parachute deploys and they make a splash down at the designated space where there are already uh, ships, uh, naval ships, as well as the NASA ships, uh, ready to take them back from there. After landing, they have a bit, they will have a slight bit of uh, problems, you know, the deep of the entire system. Right now, uh, the, the amount of fluid into their uh, the circulatory system will be slightly lesser than what all of us we have. So the moment they stand, the muscles, they will have to, you know, withstand the type of load that it will be having. So those initial problems will be there, but they all get used to it. It's uh, nothing uh, uh, unusual for them. They are all experienced to this. Indeed, so sir. on behalf of all uh, our Indians, we, uh, uh, we, we pray that Sunita William comes all well and and she recuperates here after landing up here and so to the other crew as well. Here. Indeed, we are keeping